What's up, Yens? This week on Car Dad Bill, we have a spectacular guest. We have a 2024 Lexus TX 550H Plus Luxury All-Wheel Drive. I know that's a whole lot again. These, these names of these cars are getting longer and longer and longer with more numbers and letters and whatever else in it. But this is the plug-in hybrid Lexus TX 550 7 passenger. So it's kind of like a Grand Highlander, but it has the Lexus finishes, which, I mean, you guys know this already. Lexus makes a fantastic vehicle. And this vehicle might be, it just might be the best family vehicle, luxury vehicle that I've tested in a very long time for a few different reasons. And we'll get into that during the review, but let's go for a ride. All right, guys, first impressions of the Lexus TX is the size is perfect the interior and exterior finishes the luxury touch touches you get the led lighting um, the trim the wheels uh, the the whole the whole body is just sculpted very elegantly the interior is extremely quiet and well made the drive modes the electric um, ability to have it plugged in and have the electric drive modes and then the hybrid drive as well all the power you get with that stuff. I love the interior. All the first impressions are exactly what you would think. Luxury, family SUV, lots of room for your, for your people and your stuff, all wheel drive. Let's get to the real review and talk about it. What's up, Yens? Real quick, if you have a minute, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please tell your friends about these videos. I'm shooting videos as often as I can. We're getting cars as often as we can. Life is crazy. I try to get these posted as often as possible. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Subscribe if you can. Thanks. All right, Jens. Here we are out front of the Lexus TX 550 Plus, the H Plus. And you know why it's called a Hybrid Plus? It's because we have the plug-in hybrid capability. And what can I say about this? This is like the perfect size SUV at least for my family and for families of like four and five people, maybe even a little bit more. This is like the perfect size vehicle. I love the stance. I love the whole silhouette. It's got a very balanced and big stance and big look to it. These wheels are by far my favorite Lexus wheels to date. 22 inch. They're like a gunmetal soft alloy wheel. Just so sharp. I mean, it fits the body so well. It fills out the wheel. It doesn't even look 22. Huge wheels. Up front, we have a gorgeous, subtle Lexus front grille with all the technology packed in. I mean, you got sensors down here. You have a camera. You have your radar. You have your LED lighting. You have your LED turn signals. You have your fogs. And you have turning lights that aid in your turning. But that grill has just been softened and made more elegant, in my opinion. One thing it doesn't have is a sunroof. And I know that's going to bug some people for $80,000 plus. But it doesn't bother me. I don't really use a sunroof that often. My wife does. On this side, we have the gas. The gas refueling cap over here on this side, which you have to open from the inside trim piece back here look at this trim line it goes up the window along and then it stops here blends into the black for the window that wraps around the back it just looks sharp and then you also have this really beautiful body line that comes from the door and look how it look how it wraps look how it wraps right here it has like an overhang then follow that line follow that line it comes out around the mirror comes all the way back and it tucks up into the window. That's beautiful, beautiful sculpted design. The wraparound taillight with the LED blinkers, beautiful. No exhaust pipes, no bumper. Looks really classy though. Love the new Lexus, how it comes across the back like that. The TX over back in the back here so you know what you got. LED everything back here. LED tail lights, LED turn signals, LED rear lights, reverse lights. The window is big. Subtle differences there. It's a big window, 
but the trim is made so well that you can't really tell. On this side, we have the charging the charging port. So we're able to take a, a regular household charger. There's no supercharging on this because you're not getting all that mileage. You're getting about 40 miles to a charge. And then I, the other thing I love about Lexus now is that these door handles, they don't move. There's a button inside. There's a button in there that you press to open the door. Same for the inside, and we'll talk about, talk about that in a second. But just look at that overall. Beautiful, well executed. Let's go inside. All right, Jens, I always do my reviews at the end of the week with the car. So it does get a little bit dirty. The kids have baseball, whatever. That's life. That's car dad bill life. But look at this interior. Let's just talk about that. It is beautiful. B A U T I F U L. And I don't say that lightly. Most Lexus vehicles are beautiful inside. This Lexus vehicle is no different. And it's just magnificent. Let's start with the door materials. We have leather. We have leather. We have an aluminum looking plastic. Then we have leather again. Then we have suede, folks. We have suede right here. Go down to the door panel. You have your Mark Levingston sound system built in at like an angle, like a 3D angle. You have a little cubby hole in front of your, your windows. Your cubby hole down below. And then you have your door button, which I'll show you on my side. But then you have that leather wrap again. Look at that wrap. Beautiful. Well done. Suede in the seats. Suede in the seats. Beautifully executed. Coming around to the, to the other side here, I just want to show you. You can either open it by, by pulling this out. That's like the emergency unlock. But that's, that's really how you do it. You hit the button. You, you hold the handle. Instead of having a handle up here or something in here, you just grab the handle like you normally would, hit the button, open the door. Magnificent. Solid sounding doors. You have your driver's seat settings here, your um, fuel and your trunk opener right there, and your gauge lighting. Then you have the nice, well-designed vents into the like instrument panel kind of like panel area up here. Everything's digital up there. And when it's off, this is like, this is a screen here. So when it's off, it looks like a cockpit. Beautiful. So down here, real quick, there's our fuel gauge that reads um, about three quarters of the way full, 200 mile range left. Over here, we have our mileage for our electric, our battery. And I charged it last night and I drove to work this morning and drove back. I had 42 miles range when I got in the car this morning. So I have 35 miles left. Keep in mind, when that goes away, it goes to the hybrid. See down here, it says EV mode right now. If I come down here to this, to the, down here to the selections down here, I can actually make it automatic back and forth, or I can go back and forth. I can hold the charge and go EV or go HV hybrid vehicle drive in hybrid vehicle for as, you know, as long as I have fuel and then it'll jump back over to the electric. But for what I do around town, I don't drive more than 30 miles a day sometimes, maybe even less than that. I can use this mileage every day and hardly ever use that tank. When I go to Pittsburgh and back and things like that, I'll start eating away at this, this will go away, and then I'll have my hybrid mileage to drive on. And either way, I mean, driving as electric vehicle or driving as a hybrid vehicle, it has so much power, so much torque, it's just overwhelming, and it doesn't even matter. It's just a well-driving, easy-driving vehicle in no matter what mode you have. But I like the fact that you can go between the two, plug it in and get that electric vehicle mode. And really, this whole week that I've had the vehicle, I would say out of the 283 miles that I've driven this thing, it's literally been in electric for probably half of that, if not more. Now, I've charged it every night. It doesn't take that much to charge it either. Over here, we have the power button. Your HVAC controls are dedicated down here, but then there, there's some dedicated buttons here, but then most of it is built into the screen. You just touch the climate, climate comes up. 
you can get it all to each side driver mode max heat max cool all that stuff silent modes your seats your steering wheel all that stuff's built into the screen the screen's pretty well pretty well made pretty fast pretty responsive um no qualms about that it works really well it looks really nice down here we have our wireless charging and we have the charging capability here for actual plug-in this is just a storage space your parking assist and your camera views then you have that beautiful shifter love this shifter love how it's made it's just so small and compact you don't need anything huge anymore auto hold parking brake and then you have your drive modes for your suspension traction control your hybrid back and forth to hold the charge or you have automatic and it usually defaults to the automatic um, unless you put it in ev mode like i have it i have it actually in ev mode like just on purpose so you have that this interior in general is just really really nice looking really nice really clean really all the good materials you like you expect from lexus down here this is kind of cool this cup holder is there but then there's a button you can pull it out and it gives you an even bigger space to put like a bigger cup or you can just have you know one cup in there you can take this one out and just have one cup holder and have some bigger stuff in there but i like the versatility of it i like how it's easy to take in and out one-handed use put my cup back in there all as well and i just love the design of it let's get in the back seat real quick and take a look at that stuff getting in the back seat same thing button on the back door opens up we have our captain's chairs that are in the back here and decent amount of space back here i can sit behind myself we have charging ports back here for the kiddos we have the hvac system back here for the for the kiddos and it has heated and cooled rear seats lock boxes for real estate but you have a button here that you hit the button and it slides everything forward and allows you to use this step to get up into that third row and i'll show you the third row when we get back to that back section but look how big that section is with the third row down it's enormous so if you don't need passenger space right away you can also flip this forward you can also flip this forward and you can slide the seats up and down you know forward and backward with that lever as well same really nice materials leather wrapped everything you have some vent shades back here as well to make it a little bit more private if you want but overall insanely nice back seat coming to the back underneath the x is the button opens up the trunk huge trunk big trunk space underneath here is some charging i have an i have my own charging cable at home so i left that one in there but you have storage in there you have a jack you have an air pressure for your for your tires down here we have 120 volt 1500 watt household plug this is these are the buttons to, to bring the seats up when you bring the seats up to hold it down it starts bringing that seat up once the seats are up you have a decent amount of space still i would say just enough for like one or two hockey bags if you had the smaller hockey bags you could definitely fit um, baseball equipment back here that's my bucket that's a circle for my my baseball bucket so i mean that'll fit in there but then look at that seat you slide those forward a little bit and you have plenty of room back here two seats so this is a six seater not a bad back seat cup holders on both sides buttons for moving the seats back and forth and they also have uh, charging ports up here on both sides so really pretty functional let's go for a ride oh and real quick these lights are amazing at nighttime what a great idea to illuminate like the entire area on both sides just a great idea for lighting I mean lights down here work well they shine down here but these lights illuminate not only 
your your storage and luggage area, but they illuminate the the, the the space around the vehicle at night. And it's just a really good idea. Bravo on that. All right, guys, facts and figure time for the Lexus TX. And it's just, it's one of those vehicles that I just love it. And look, it's listening to me. When you say its name, it gives you the voice activated feature. So you can actually start, you know, telling it to turn up the radio and do all, do all that stuff. But not for today. 2024 Lexus um, TX 550 H plus luxury all wheel drive. Nightfall mic up paint job on the outside. It's like a blue, it's like a dark blue metallic paint job. Gorgeous with those wheels. Beautiful. Under the hood is a 3.5 liter V6 plug-in hybrid with 404 combined horsepower. That's all you need to know. You can do 40 miles range electric vehicle, completely silent, no, no engine interference at all. And then you can go to hybrid with 404 horsepower that gets you another 200 miles range, 250 mile range if you have a full tank of gas. I really don't see a downside on this vehicle for an urban suburban driver, someone that needs to go places, doesn't go over, you know, a hundred miles a day. And that's a lot. If you drive a hundred miles or, or more a day, you probably don't want this necessarily, but it's not going to hurt you either. You're still going to have, you know, a third of your trip all electric. Keep that in mind. So like you plug it in at night, you wake up the next morning, you have 40 miles of range, 35 to 40 miles of range, and you can drive a third of it or a quarter of it all electric, and then you're hybrid most of the way. And by the way, there's CDB real MPG on hybrid mode in this vehicle for me this week was 44 miles of the gallon. So you're getting 40 plus miles of the gallon. Toyota only, or Lexus only says that you're supposed to get like 27 miles to the gallon, maybe 30 miles to the gallon hybrid. If you're driving in hybrid all the time, you'll probably get a lower mileage. But since I'm using electric most of the time and I'm driving, you know, here and there, staying in town, using the electric part of the hybrid system more often, 44 miles to the gallon. That's better than my wife's Honda Accord hybrid. I digress. That 404 horsepower hybrid motor is is paired to a variable transmission um, direct for all-wheel drive system and it's got 5,000 pounds of towing capability so you have decent towing capability you have four-wheel drive all-wheel drive or direct for all-wheel drive there's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger the price so the $76,700 MSRP is before some of these things that 1200 or that 120 volt 1500 watt charger in the back the power outlet that i showed you um, that's added in the cold package tech package the rear hat hatch cargo lights which i love adds a couple things to this vehicle brings that bottom line to 82,784 as tested let's get on the road and talk about the good and the bad because i haven't found a whole lot of bad besides not having a sunroof let's go talk about it all right, Jens, we're getting on the road. We're talking about the good and the bad. <clears throat> and I'm really going to be honest with you. There's not a whole lot of bad. For, for my family, for what we need to do, and for what this thing has, and for just the fit and finish of everything, you almost can't beat this for someone in a suburban or urban environment. And some people even in rural environments that, that have a charging point, maybe at their office or something like that. But for someone that wants to try out electric vehicle driving, it doesn't want to go all straight EV right away, but they want to kind of like slide into that soft hybrid, um, back and forth. The plug-in hybrid model, regardless of manufacturer and vehicle we're talking about, the plug-in hybrid model is the entry level. It's like the gateway drug to an EV vehicle, for real. And this SUV basically is the best example that I've found so far from my taste, from my car dad bill personal taste. Lexus makes a sharp luxury sporty vehicle with so much style and so much, you know, charisma. Then you add in 
the unbelievable 3.5 liter hybrid hybrid drive, 404 horsepower. And then on top of that, you give me almost 42 miles range on a consistent basis of EV driving. I'm sold because like I said, I don't do a ton of like long distance driving anymore on a regular basis. It's mostly around town. It's mostly to hockey games, to baseball games, to lessons, to gymnastics. And even like during the hockey season, I would get most of my um, commutes to these hockey rinks and whatnot on the weekends electric. And if I don't, I'm still getting a 30 plus mile per gallon hybrid vehicle that can carry everybody and all of their stuff. It's just such a great marriage of all that stuff. But I digress again because I'm just spewing all over the place about how much I love this thing. Let's go to the bad real quick because there's only a few things. There's no sunroof in this model. I'm fairly certain you can option in a moonroof for a Lexus TX. So let me get that out of the way. But this as tested model that I'm driving today does not have a sunroof. And that's a big downfall for a lot of my friends, my wife, my kids, like everybody except for me really and a couple other people, they want a moonroof or a sunroof of some sort. So that's a big downfall. The other thing, and this is a personal quibble, but I want that bench seat in the back here. I want that five passenger capability right up front, boom, boom, boom. And then give me a seven seater, give me the extra two in the back. And the Highlander gives you three seats in the back. So there's, you know, I want a little bit more ability to have more people in this. The captain's chairs are nice, actually separates my kids sometimes, which is like a built-in babysitter. It's like a built-in, you know, guard back there. I don't have to, I don't have to referee everything all the time, but give me that seven seater passenger capacity. That would be great. The last thing, the Mark Levingston sound system, while it's good and while it's better than most basic systems, it's an option on this. It's not as great as you think. I want a little bit more strong sound. I want a little bit more epic sound at lower volumes. And you have to really crank it up to get the, the, the strong bass, the strong highs, the clear sound. You really have to turn it up almost too loud. My wife and I love listening to music. We love listening to music loud. And she even said, like, you have to turn this thing up too much for it to even sound good. So that's a little bit of a quibble as well. Let's get to the good. Good list. Let me start off the good list with the EV mode and the hybrid mode. What a great way to set up a vehicle, a luxury vehicle, a plug-in hybrid vehicle, so you can get both mileages. And I already talked about that at nauseum earlier in the video, so I'm not going to go over it again. But that's the number one thing on my list, the plug-in hybrid capability of the TX550H+. Next thing, the range, the, e, the EV range is wonderful. 30 to 42 mile range, I'll take it all day. I would love a little bit more, but I'll take it. The next thing, 404 hybrid, uh, 404 horsepower combined for the hybrid. Fantastic. That's an enormous amount of horsepower. And hybrids in, in, in general have never had that much power in the past. So I love how the technology has brought things forward and now there's an enormous amount of horsepower on top 400 horsepower you know five to eight years ago was corvette range so now we're talking about a lexus suv with 404 horsepower next thing on my good list actually the last two things on my good list comfort style feel luxury and 44 miles per gallon you cannot go wrong with a luxury SUV that can hold six people and some of their stuff, most of their stuff, getting 44 miles per gallon. You just can't beat it. It's got the hybrid technology at its peak right now. It's just seamless transitions, quiet driving, effortless acceleration, and you're getting 40 plus miles to the gallon. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, disclaimer, most people are not going to get 40 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. I only have this vehicle for a week. I plug it in every night. I exploit the electronic vehicle capability that this has. So if I just let the EV run out and I just drove it in hybrid mode for a few days, 
that mileage is probably going to be around 32, 33. But still, 33 miles of the gallon hybrid, six passenger SUV. What's not to love about this thing? That's Car Dad Bill this week. Thanks for watching. Real cars for real people for real life. I will see you in next week. Thanks for watching.